for a brief hiatus, the US Chess Championships has wrapped up, and we are back at it with Chess Openings Explained. I'm Nick Risto, your instructor, and today we will be going over our next part in the Scotch course uh, here with the Goring Gambit, so we'll get right into it. Okay, the Goring Gambit, a very dubious line for white, though uh, I should cover it because it does arise from the Scotch opening, and that is what we are surveying throughout this series. So let's start off with what the Goring Gambit is. So as always, we get our, our Scotch position here, e4, e5, a knight f3, knight c6, followed by d4. And here we're going to start looking into black's main line with e takes d4. And here the Goring Gambit is for c3. So after c3, black has a couple options, the main ones being knight f6, d5, and the accepted variation with d takes c3. But we're going to go over some of black's other tries here, um, and what white can do if black doesn't go for these options. So the very first one I want to uh, talk about is pawn to d3. Now this may look like something that resembles what black could play in a Smith-Mora gambit, but here this just isn't good. Black isn't posing any problems. White can simply capture the pawn, and after knight f6, castles, and d6, black has posed no problems, and white's position is fine. You'll see maybe a move like rook to e1, bishop to f4, g5. White should just have fine play here. But another try they have is queen to e7, and this is directly asking white, what are they going to do about the e4 pawn? So you do have to protect it. If you allow the queen to take with check, it does give black a lot of activity for not so much. Um, but I, I do want to say that if you do take and queen e4, bishop e2 is, is technically playable. I just, I don't see the, the attraction to this, but you can go for it if you want. Otherwise, defend the pawn with bishop to d3, and after they capture on c3, the obvious knight captures, you are giving up the pawn, so you do want to develop your pieces. And now after d6, castles knight f6, and bishop g5, um, black really only has one good move here, and that move is queen to d8. And the point of queen to d8 is you're vacating the e7 square for your bishop to develop here to e7. If black plays anything else, it's, it's going to be a tough game. Like if they try something like g6, trying to develop the bishop, this immediately loses to knight d5, where there's two attackers on the knight, your queen is attacked, and you're losing uh, a piece. So black's going to have a, a really tough time if they try anything else. Even if they try bishop e6 and castling long, um, okay, my engine's giving bishop b5 as a good move, but it's also queen a4. Just saying, I don't really want you to castle, but if you do, I'm going to punish you for it by bringing my pieces in. And now bishop b5 with the threat of capturing the knight and taking on a7. Uh, black doesn't need to be allowing this. So, um, queen to d8. It, again, if they try anything else, they're worse. Already here, I think it's a little tough as black. Just white can play bishop to b5. Everything's looking like it's pinned. And after the queen develops and the rooks get into the game, I don't see any problems. The other alternative, I guess kind of serious alternative black has to these main lines is knight g to e7. Um, and you might see something like a Cozio type setup, like Cozio from the Rui Lopez, where they go knight g to e7, Fianchetto the bishop. But this pawn is not on e5 anymore, so it's not going to be a closed position. And here, white is totally okay offering up the pawn again they, they don't need to take back right away they totally can and just be happy with a pawn majority in the center but i think more in the spirit is bishop to c4 um if they do take on d4 one line i do have that black can follow up with is striking back with d5 opening up this center opening up the bishop um e5 shuts down the center and then bishop to g4. So bishop to e2 and knight f5. This does put a lot of pressure on d4. Um, I Theoretically, white shouldn't go for this, but I find it, it is playable. Knight c3, and you have enough development. But okay, okay. Bishop c4. d5 now, so something that's very thematic in a fried liver, or 
maybe even some uh, crazy Danish gambit. Take on d5, knight takes on d5, and castles. After castles, black just develops with bishop to e7, and after knight takes d4, black can play knight e5 hitting the bishop, and the bishop can just drop back. Um, really, black should play knight e5 first. Um, if they do castle, I think white is going to be a little bit better after capturing on c6, and these doubled pawns are going to be a long-term weakness, which black doesn't have to allow. Um, if, if they don't have to allow this, I would suggest knight e5, uh, making sure these pawns are not doubled so black doesn't have this potential weakness in the position. And these are kind of all the alternatives to our main lines that we're going to look at here. So with that being said, let's get into the main lines. Okay, so we're going to first take a look at knight to f6 so knight to f6 totally playable move and the most testing reply from white is playing e5 this is just asking black you know hey you just moved your piece i'm attacking it where are you going to move it to again are you going to burn a tempo and there's two moves here that are possible knight to e4 and knight to d5 let's take a look at knight to e4 first after knight to e4 I think white can get a little bit of an edge here, just playing queen e2, again harassing this knight, and now black really needs to play f5 or d5 to maintain the knight. If they move the knight again to c5, then you can just take on d4, and black has burnt all of this time, um, really nowhere good for the knight to go anyway. Um, knight a6 is probably the best materialistically, um, but knight c3, white's just running away with the development with the space this is good like engines are saying the best move here is knight to e6 and uh this just fails quickly to d5 so that shows you how good this position is for black so really they do need to play f5 or d5 and i think both can can be looked at i think d5 is a little more risky i think according to the engines in theory uh, so something like pawn takes, and then f5 to support the knight anyway, and now knight d4. If you're playing f5 to support the knight anyway, though, might as well go f5 first. And the idea is that after pawn takes, you play d5, and now instead of having this pawn on the king side that's supporting your knight, you have this central pawn that's supporting your knight, so it's a little bit safer, you're still keeping your space in the center. I think this should be preferred. Knight to d2, queen takes f6, just taking care of the pawn. If white tries to go for this pawn after bishop takes, you're going to be facing a lot of pressure on c3 because the bishop adds to this attack, and it's going to be a lot harder to catch up in development. So you really shouldn't be going for this extra pawn. Really, white's main goal in most of these lines is going to be develop as fast as possible. That's really what we've been looking at with all of these gambits here in the scotch. You give up the pawn develop everything as fast as possible, you'll be okay. But if you do waste time, like grabbing this pawn on g7, you will be worse. So okay, knight d2, queen f6, take on e4, take on e4, take on e4 again with check, and bishop e7 to block the check. And from here, there's a couple good moves white can play. Um, I really like bishop to b5, and after they take on c3, castles, castles, Bishop takes c6, pawn takes, and bishop g5. And here this can lead to a, a forced line from black. Black's only good move here is bishop to f5. If they try moving the queen anywhere, uh, you're just going to lose this piece on e7. So bishop to f5, counterattacking the queen. And okay, queen e2, they move their queen, and you take on e7. And this looks like it's just, you know, a piece. It looks like white is a piece up. But there is bishop to d3. Hitting our own queen, skewering to the rook. So after queen e3, um, first they snap this pawn on b2. We take on f8. They take on a1 queen. We take and takes. And this has all um, been seen before. Engines ha have shown this to be the way to go. I think it's a very interesting way of getting into an endgame where it looks like all the pieces just get traded. Um, both sides have a rook, a minor piece, but white has the better structure 
at the cost of a pawn. So I think this is a, a very interesting end game to take a look at. But okay, knight e4, this is some, some sideline black can play, but the main move by far is knight d5. And after knight d5, white has a couple options here, so let's explore. The first option that I don't think is as good for white is queen to b3. Um, really, I think you do need to develop these minor pieces first. If you don't, it's going to be hard to coordinate a very strong attack. But we are posing a problem. We're asking black, you know, where are you going to put your knight? So this knight typically goes to b6, and we can take on d4. But now black can just play this kind of slow d6. It's putting pressure on our center, opening up the bishop. And, okay, we have to deal with it. Again, white should be focusing on development for most of this. So bishop to b5, bishop e6, hitting the queen. You do need to resolve this, but first, it does make sense to throw in this check, double up the pawns while we can, and then retreat the queen, immediately putting pressure on c6. Black needs to protect their pawn, so queen d7, and castles. Kind of helps white almost finish their development. You still have these queenside pieces, but those will develop very naturally. Um, moves like rook e1 can also be incorporated into the play, and black's just going to develop with moves like bishop e7 and castle. So all of this should flow pretty naturally, and I don't think it's too hard for players to find all of these moves. And I will say, even though black does have these doubled pawns, this is not the kind of attacking position white is wanting when they're playing a gambit. This is going to be a bit slower play and, you know, difficult to just whip up an attack on the king because moves like knight g5 are not available. Um, this knight on c3 is pretty well controlled by black's pieces. So you can play this, but I think black is doing just fine. All right, another alternative white has after knight d5 is bishop to b5. And this will actually turn into something that resembles a martial attack in the Rui Lopez. I was actually a little surprised to see that there was this kind of resemblance. But let's get into it. Black can play a6. Now, capturing the knight, you, you can do it. But uh, I don't know why you would help black speed up their development. So you just go bishop a4. And if they go b5, so be it. You just retreat, put some pressure on f7. But they will typically go knight b6. After knight b6, you can actually castle here. And after knight takes, queen takes, black should really play d5 and develop. But now we see captures, captures, rook to e1 check, bishop to e6, knight d4, and queen h4. And this is where... I said it starts to resemble the martial attack in the Rui Lopez. You have both bishops staring at the king side with the queen, and g3 is necessary to stop all the mating threats. If you play something like h3, uh, okay, black's probably just going to be better after even queenside castle. Um, I don't think... Well, okay, the idea of castling is so you can get the sacrifice to work. So white does face trouble, so g3 is forced. And queen h3 with ideas of bishop d5. Um, so you take this piece and the pawn takes. And you cannot take this with check because watch out, the queen is hiding on h3. So don't hang your rook. Instead, you can put pressure on the center. And after castles, um, finish developing your pieces. If you do take, a trade of queens is fine. But I think black is going to be happy i believe they can just trade rooks here looks like rook trade may actually help white because of this extra pawn but black doesn't have to go for this they can go 95 trap your rook and then get a uh, trade when it benefits them so bishop b5 is an option for white um and this can be kind of how black responds i think it can be sharp i think there are tricks both sides can play for but the main move for white is just take back on d4 right away with the pawn. You can take back, make sure you have this nice center, no problems. But black has this, this nice check, um, bishop to b4. And 
Okay, d6 is another option as well. This actually keeps more pieces on the board, so if black doesn't like, you know, trading off pieces and they want to maintain more chances, um, then, then that's fine. d6 is, is good here, and it's something like bishop b5 is always met with a6, bishop a4, bishop e7, regular developing moves here. We see both sides castle, the knight reroutes, bishop to c2, maybe looking at h7, knight b4 hitting the bishop, bishop goes back to b3. This bishop is a very nice attacker, so we don't want to let their knight trade off for it. Now after bishop f5, we can finally start getting more developing moves with rook d1, a5, a3, and the knight goes towards the center. I think this is slightly better for white, but again, with the pieces left on the board, definitely more chances for black to fight as well. But bishop b4 check does lead to equality. Really, white only has two moves, uh, and it is not the attractive knight c3. This is where the knight wants to develop naturally, but this is losing on the spot after knight captures, pawn captures, and bishop captures, check with a4. So, the only two moves you have are bishop d2 or knight d2, both completely playable. I think I like going with the knight more. Um, keep the bishop on the board, it may be of use one day. And if black decides to trade their bishop for their knight, this is typically a trade that is good for white. They do have the bishop pair. So, black's obviously not going to want to do that. Black's going to continue with regular development by castling. And now we can start taking care of these pieces on the queen side. We play a3, kind of provoke black to take. If they end up going backwards, then bishop c4 hitting the d5 knight. So this knight has to move, you know, and, and then castles. Like, black's pieces are being misplaced here. They're, they're not coordinating well. So uh, they really should just take, and after takes, play d6. And again, d6 is just putting pressure on the center looking to play bishop g4, and that's exactly what we get. Bishop b5, bishop g4, h3, takes, takes, and takes on e5. Um, it looks like the knight could take on d4, but you do have this knight hanging, and after something like knight c2 check, king e2, white is actually better here. You take on a1, and now something like bishop to d3 trapping this knight is very important you can retreat this bishop trap the knight and stop black from playing c6 which would fork your own pieces so uh white is actually better here um i do want to point out that capturing on a1 is a counter mistake by white because of c6 and after bishop takes pawn takes queen takes you're just you're, you're down a rook for a pawn or sorry you're, you're down the exchange um, but yeah, this is not, not what white is hoping for. So we will go back. D takes E5 is the best move. And now white will go with this sort of thematic now. Captures on C6, doubling the pawns. And take on E5. And after rook to E8, finally on move 15, white can castle. Um, after all this time, give up the pawn on E5. Totally fine. You're going to develop with your rook and hit these pawns. And that's what the rest of this end game is going to focus on. Is, you know, both sides have two rooks and a minor piece. Black has a knight and a slightly worse structure. So this is going to be the imbalances. And I think white is doing just fine. Though though the engines will fight and say this is equal. But this is what you can look forward to if your opponent plays knight f6 on move 4. All right, let's get into the next section here with d5. So our scotch game, the Goring Gambit, and they play d5. d5 is probably the best way to refute the Gambit, um, or I guess decline, not refute, but decline. Um, but this, this is pretty good for black. Now... White has a few tries here, but I do want to cover the mistakes. You should not take on d4. Because they take on e4, your knight has to move somewhere. Might as well go to g5 and try and win the pawn back. But now bishop to b4 check, and suddenly it's black who's developing with initiative. Knight to c3, and queen d5 will hold on. 
and it's, it's tough. I mean, a3 hitting the bishop, a trade, an h6 hitting our knight, and knight h3, bishop h3, gh3. And this, this is the problem, is that our pawns are not the prettiest pawns in the world. Uh, all, all of them can be considered a target. And after knight g to e7, uh, black just, like, looks like they're doing good. Um, black also has this idea of pawn to e3 looking to capture on f2, but also looking to capture on h1. So this this is another idea for them. Um, I guess an illustrative example of that is after queen d5. If white plays something like bishop d2 trying to break any pin, there is takes on c3, takes on c3. And okay, you can play h6 first, hit the knight, and then capture. Uh, but now e3 is even more devastating because you're hitting a piece and the rook. Uh, so this is just completely lost for white. Another mistake white can make after d5 is playing e5, saying, okay, I'm going to try and keep the center closed. But black can take, after knight takes, play d4. And now starting to, you know, they're still attacking you. You have to respond, trying to win the pawn back. And now bishop c5 holding on. And okay, white just has to settle with developing and getting pushed around quite a bit. And I don't see any problem whatsoever with black's position. Yeah, this pawn's over, or not really overextended, but it's out there. Um, but I mean, it's, it's totally well defended with no targets. Um, nothing can really attack the bishops right now. Black should just be a little bit better here. The last idea that white has aside from the main line is bishop to d3, supporting the center pawn. And I think this is okay. You are developing your piece, so it's not like the move's completely useless. It is a little passive, though. Um, black can play bishop to g4 after white castles, knight to f6, hitting the e pawn again. So white plays rook to e1 to support it. Get this rook onto a file that's about to open. And now black really needs to play bishop e7, um, closing off this file before white has the time to take on d5. Um, white can play pawn to e5 here, hitting the knight, and the knight has to retreat, and bishop to b5. And now we're looking again for our usual captures on c6, double the pawn idea. And okay, this is just an illustrative line for how the rest of, of this can go, but... Again, white is going to focus on these doubled pawns. Um, they can also give up um, some of their king safety by doubling their pawns on the king side as well. And this will give some play for black. Um, but I think that in, in general, this should be fine for both sides. Um, black kind of solidif or fixes their structure, rather. Um, white still has... Um, this doubled issue here, but you, you can also say, you know, open file for the rook. And I think there's arguments to be had there, but this is also uh, a one that looks fun to play. <laughs> okay, but after d5, white's uh, main try is just capture on d5, and black's only move is to capture with the queen. Uh, there's no need to move your knight and waste time, just take the piece. Normally, this is a bad idea because white can play knight to c3, but because our pawn is on c3, it's not something black needs to worry about. And now something like cb4. And here, bishop to g4, our natural move for black, already setting black up to castle queenside. Um, and now white can play bishop e2 or knight c3, but it will transpose into each other. Um, if they go knight c3 first, it's met with bishop b4. And white doesn't have much better than bishop e2. Now, black can capture, white can capture, and queen c4. Now, for those of you who don't know, uh, world top 10 player Levon Aronian uh, has recently moved to St. Louis. And this was the position that he gave me. I said, do you know anything about this? And he's like, oh yeah, of course, I'm top 10 in the world. Of course I know this. <laughs> he wasn't like that. But he, he very kindly showed this variation and just said, yeah, no, black... Black is at least equality here. Um, so, verified. Top 10 play. Um, white can capture. Black isn't worried about the doubled pawns. Um, if black takes, 
this does allow white to castle so this is part of the reason why it's okay to let the pawns double is you are preventing white from castling and this king is stuck in the center and really the only way to i guess remedy this is to trade queens and then after you know black castles queenside you can develop the rest of your pieces fine and not have to worry about getting checkmated in the center so this does work out no real big problems for black yes doubled pawns white has an isolated pawn and both sides have have development they have play so this is probably the easiest way to just say okay the goran gambit won't have huge big play but all right let's look at the goring gambit accepted so we've looked at the miscellaneous fourth moves we looked at the um, moves that decline the gambit but what happens if black accepts and i think there's going to be some sad news here for any goring gambit players because while it could be a practical try Everything I looked at seemed uh, to show white doesn't get this huge crushing edge. So knight takes c3. There, There is also bishop c4. And I will give a little bit of credit to bishop c4. Although it could be much better. They can take. White takes. And now this is starting to look like our lovely Danish gambit. So Dennis LaRue would be proud. But I don't think this is going to be as good. Um, White definitely has these ideas of castle and queenside and h4, but I, I don't see where like huge sacrifices on f7 come in like all the Danish Gambit players really want. I think, you know, this is different. Black is just one move faster than the normal Danish. So, okay, we, we will go back. Um, after bishop c4, they could take on b2. Um... There are a couple transpositions. I think the big one is bishop to b4 here. And this actually transposes to the London defense that we covered earlier in the series. So uh, after b takes c3, bishop a5, castles, and bishop to b6. We've already gone over the analysis for this in a previous video. And I think it definitely deserves a look. Other than bishop to b4, I guess there's a couple mistakes black can make here. Bishop c5... Um, Bishop f7, king f7, and queen d5 check actually, you know, turns into the scotch gambit, which we've already covered, or at least scotch gambit-like positions. And against bishop to e7, then there's knight takes c3, and then probably the best they have is bishop to b4, just going and pinning the knight and moving the bishop again. Um, if they don't, like, okay, let's say they play d6 trying to develop, queen to b3 putting pressure on the position if knight h6 like you just take on h6 and then f7 so big problems if black is not careful so that's why we see bishop to b4 now queen to b3 takes with check and queen takes um this is what white can hope for if black takes on c3 i think this is going to be your ideal situation um, because black is so far behind in development. But this is not usually the case. Um, there are better moves for black. Um, for instance, knight f6 here is completely fine. And normal development with d6, bishop e7, and castles kingside is going to be super solid. Um, just takes on, on c3 with the knight. You have a game where white is just a pawn down, I think. Uh, what are some other moves white has? So, um, I guess the mistakes that I didn't, that I didn't cover is if you take back right away with the pawn, uh, black is just already much better. The pawn structure is, uh, dubious at best. And how are you going to expect to get compensation for your pawn if you're not developing your pieces? You, you really need to be developing your pieces here. So I don't want to see anybody taking with their pawn. And there are some people who like to try queen b3 right away, but it's a little bit slow. The attack on f7 isn't fast enough. Um, we we kind of transpose to this, you know, Danish gambit-like position. And again, it just, it just isn't fast enough to work on f7. So, um, yeah, those are the mistakes white can make on move 5. 
But really, knight takes c3 is, is what most people play. Develop the knight. Don't run your luck with trying to get a better Danish gambit. It just doesn't work. And here, black has two moves, it looks like. Um, d6 is the first one. It's a bit solid. Black is intending on playing bishop to e7 and using it defensively rather than the option where they go bishop to b4 and they pin the knight. So d6 is going to be a bit more defensive and this can lead to a sharp rather forcing line so i think both both sides need to be prepared here white starts off with bishop to c4 knight to f6 developing on the king side and queen to b3 with this attack on f7 um and now queen to d7 should be preferred to e7 you want to make sure e7 is cleared for your bishop so you can castle but this move you're blocking your bishop you're blocking your knight from coming back if it needs to and white can take advantage of this by playing knight g5, putting more pressure on f7. To combat this pressure, knight to e5 will defend and simultaneously attack an attacker. <clears throat> Don't hear that one much. Uh, but now white can play something like bishop b5, c6, hitting the bishop, and now f4. f4 is a way to try and break through. Um, you can trade off minor pieces takes on e5 and now um, taking on b5 with the queen is a mistake i think a queen trade is going to be just fine the bishop develops with check trades itself off and then castles um, should be be just fine for black they're just up a healthy pawn they have a bishop for a knight <clears throat> so instead of taking on b5 white should just play bishop e3 Bishop to e3, just developing, looking to bring a rook to the center. And black has this, this nice resource, a5. And this is what keeps them in the game. After white castles, the point of a5 is to play a4 and now trade the queen. Um, or at least offer the trade. It's not necessary. Black can definitely play bishop to d6 here. Um... White should probably keep the queens on the board. They are down a pawn, so keeping the queen will help generate chances. Uh, and now, just to keep the position together, rook a5. Rook a5, rook a to c1, h6. And now, really, the only move to keep white in this game um, with, I guess, as close to equality as possible. All the other moves, I'm getting at least minus one and a half for but rook takes f6, a exchange sacrifice to double the pawns on the king side, knight to f3, and after b6, this is where the game will start. Now white has a few deviations, some mainly focusing on queen f2, hopefully looking at f6 and b6. There's also ideas of knight h4 to f5, and king to h1, just a waiting move, is also fine as well. So I'm just showing this because this is something that both both players should kind of know where the game can go. Black needs to be, you know, watchful for this F4 push opening up the file and the exchange sack. At the same time, white needs to know when when to push, when to offer a trade of queens and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, D6. The other option they have is Bishop C5. This is kind of an alternative to bishop b4, and now bishop c4, and now we're starting to see this idea of bishop uh, sacrifices and queen d5, so d6. It stops this tactic. If white takes, there's no queen d5 because the bishop is protected. Um, and so after uh, castles and knight e7, both sides can develop naturally, and neither side has proven a significant advantage yet. But okay, the main move here... Bishop to b4, I think, is going to be a way to shut down white's play. White can try two moves. Bishop g5 is interesting, um, but black can take. Um, bishop e7, just blocking, is also equalizing right away. But bishop takes c3. Again, these pawns, th this is not what white wants. They don't want these pawns to become isolated and lonely. It's going to be harder to hold on to them, and already being down a pawn... 
the more weaknesses you have, the worse your position is. Uh, so knight g e7 blocking the attack on the queen, bishop c4 and d6. Black has no problem developing, and white just doesn't have this compensation for the pawn. So that's why white tries bishop to c4, and d6 can be played here. Now, black is intending on trading pieces on c3, uh, and they play d6 to prepare knight to f6 without getting kicked by e5. So if they go knight f6 right away, e5 actually holds some merit for white, so... Don't allow this, just play d6, open up your bishop to go to g4, and now your knight can go to f6 without being harassed. Kind of like the idea in the open Sicilian, is you play d6 to prevent this e5 push. If black decides to take on c3 instead of pushing d6, um, this will normally transpose into a line where they play d6 anyway, such as, you know, right here. Um, and yeah, if they try knight f6, just met with e5. So d6, and now white white should just castle, break the pin, try and develop. Uh, they can try knight g5. I don't know if I have faith in it. Again, black captures. I, I just I am not a fan of this structure for white, but I I I will leave it at that. Um, and black can just kind of kick all the pieces around. Now again, there is this f4 idea of trading off miners. And then getting the F file to work for you later. Um, and there is this line, which, you know, I'll show. I won't talk about it too much um, because I don't think white should go for this idea. But they do end up with a bishop for the knight. The problem is the pawns are really weak and this bishop is kind of countered by these pawns. So, yeah, I don't like this for white. I, again, I think white should just castle, break the pin. Um, queen b3 also doesn't quite work just because of captures, captures, and queen f6 offering the queen trade. It's hard to tell what compensation that white is claiming to have. So, castles. And now this is black's last chance to capture on c3 because the pin was broken. If white is allowed to move this knight maybe to d5, uh, I think they're going to be just fine. So black should take, get this weakness, be up a pawn, and secure an advantage this way. Um... If e5 is ever played, you're okay trading the knights. And, okay, if, if white trades here, they're just in a worse end game. Now they're down two pawns. Uh, they can take on f7, but, okay, like, I think black is just better. So, queen b3, looking to win f7 with check. Queen e7, protecting e, or f7. And now, like, bishop a3 hitting the queen. Blocks with c5. Bishop b5 check. And blocks with the bishop. Takes, takes, takes. Okay, and this is fine. And I think the, the last part here white can go for is... Um, well, okay, sorry. There's It's black's turn. There's a huge idea here. Um, knight to e4, hitting the bishop, hitting the pawn on c3, threatening d2 with a fork. So this one is, is a big idea. The way you stop this move, um, I wanted to point this out, is um, counterintuitive is queen to a3 this was not a natural move to me blocking the pawn but this does stop all of the threats knight to d2 is met with a rook to d1 um and the bishop is now protected c3 is still protected so i did want to make, make sure i pointed that one out now queen c6 putting pressure on the bishop um white does have the time to take on a7 here um, but they need to be careful um because you know this is not not a friendly pin so b6, trapping the bishop, trying to win this bishop uh, with just enough time that after rook fe1 and f6, queen b4, and you can give up this bishop because of this knight. So the knight takes on f2, they're going to lose it anyway, and queen takes b6 will, will be good enough for white to pull out of this, you know, tough position. And, okay, while the material is equal, I think I still... Uh, definitely prefer black's position. The pawns are much healthier than white's, and I don't think white is actually going to be strong enough, or, sorry, not strong enough, but it's going to be much more difficult for white to promote one of these two pawns rather than black slowly pushing this, you know, swarm of pawns to promote the e-pawn. So, I think that this, you know, this is kind of how the position can look, probably in the best 
best case for white but i think that uh even though white has survived his pawns are are worse and it's going to be difficult to win i think the the play here is going to be to play for a draw but okay i'm sure i'm missing a lot of tricks white has here um so if you do play the Goring Gambit, feel free to leave those tricks down in the comment section below for everyone else to take a look at. I always like to go through the comments and see what I missed. If there was a lot of stuff I missed, I like to add it onto the video, make sure you know people can see it. Otherwise, this is the Goring Gambit. I don't think it's that great for white, and black is pretty comfortable if they have done their homework. So, all right, that is the Goring Gambit. Next time, we'll be getting into the main lines of the Scotch, the Steinitz, and then we have Queen h5, and our, our main lines with Knight f6 and Bishop c5. Alrighty, you guys have a good one. Good luck with your chess. I'll see you next time.